Alright guys, today I am going to be working with my non-dominant hand to do my dominant hand, which is incredibly hard and painful and I'm really bad at it, so you guys can watch me suck at it just as bad as everybody else. But I'm only going to show you one nail in the interest of time because this can take quite a while. Um, I've already, I haven't really done any of my prep work. I'm just going to start one nail from start to finish and then work on the rest later. So let's do our index finger. So I'm going to push my cuticles back, start with that. Make sure we're all clean because gross, right? You don't want that stuff under there. Now I am going to first start with my cuticle bit and get rid of all of that. Let's, let's get you in here a little bit. Now, what I like to do, because e-files are dangerous, um, and I have a hard time using my left hand to and keeping it steady, so what I like to do is rest my non-dominant hand and move my, my finger on my dominant hand to against the drill, rather than trying to move my non-dominant hand. Also, a cool little trick to make yourself ambidextrous and get better with this hand is to practice your signature with your non-dominant hand 10 to 20 times every day. At the end of the month, this will be an almost dominant hand. Um, I'm still working on that. So hold your drill and use your fingers to steady against the drill. And then move your finger against the drill as opposed to moving the drill against your finger. And that'll help keep you from from just wearing yourself out with the drill. Because it's it's really hard for me to try to move this. I, I, I end up drilling myself all the time. Make sure you get all that dead skin off of there. You know the rule. Helps stop any lifting. And if you're like me and still have acrylic from your last set on there that you didn't bother to take off all the way because it wasn't hurting nobody and you're lazy, go ahead and get that off too. Now, we're going to buff it to get any remaining dead skin. And again, I'm moving my finger to the buffer and not moving the buffer against my finger. And getting all the, the dead skin and smoothing it all out, getting any shine off, which we covered in the, we covered in the cuticle video and the prep video. Make sure you got everything off of there and there's no shine left. See how that's nice and kind of matte looking? You want to clean it off. Now I am going to add my tip and then my primer and dehydrator. Um, I'm using tips for this because it is entirely too hard for me to try to do my non -do or my dominant hand with my non dominant hand trying to use uh, forms. It's just it's too much for me. I I can't do it. I have to use tips when I do my own. Make sure it fits. It goes from sidewall to sidewall, and I'm going with a little shorter set this week, so I'm not using my usual tips, um, the big extra long stiletto ones. Because why not? All right, so we got the one second nail glue from the Glam Trap House because it's it's the bomb. Like, I literally have glued my car to the ground with this. It's nasty. Don't touch it for God's sakes. Okay, just enough to keep it on your nail. Like, it doesn't need to be insane. I like to lay my hand flat to, to put this on so I can get a better view uh, and make sure it's even. Because if I try to, like, look at it another way, my fingernail is kind of crooked and it'll come out wrong. There we go. And like I said, I'm only doing one finger right now. I'll finish the rest later. Um, all that dries. For reference, today I am using Mia Secret Clear. I am using my Black Mamba from the Glam Trap House because it is just gorgeous and I'm going to be adding lizard skin to this. For me a secret prep and bond. Um, Panna 8080 grit files for shaping. I don't know which brush I'm going to use. I don't know if I'm going to use this pink one that I've been pushing on everybody or the the one that um, 
Desiree posted that I got the, the one of the deal of the day ones. So I think I'm going to try this one today. It's smaller than I usually work with, but while I may wait for my other brush, we'll, we'll give it a shot. All right, so I am going to trim this down with my clippers because, like I said, I'm doing a shorter set today. And see how I'm holding, I have this leaning against the table um, because it helps me keep it even because I'm not very good with my left hand. So as much as I can, I like to rest this on something when I'm using it, which gives it a lot more stability. Now you want to do as much of your shaping as you can before you put acrylic on like we covered before because otherwise uh, you're going to have a lot harder time filing. So again, I'm bringing my finger to the file rather than bringing the file to my finger just because it's easier for me that way. It uh, gives me more stability. Now I'm going to take my sanding band to even out that, that the ridge that the tip created. And again, I am resting my hand, holding it steady with, with my pinky, and then running my finger across it lightly, but I'm moving my finger and not the drill. And then when you want to get in the corner, just Again, I'm laying my hand down and just lightly moving it. When I have to move the drill, I lay my entire hand down with it and then just really lightly move it very slowly. Not so slow that you burn yourself, but slow enough that you don't run up on your finger. Ow. Make sure you got all those rid that that ridge filed down, so you don't have that dip right there, and the edges are clean. Now I'm going to make sure my shaping is proper, how I want it, and I'm not doing a, a ton of shaping with this because it's already pretty much the shape I wanted. It's short coffin. All right, now's the fun part. So, I'm gonna get my, what I like to do actually is per, like pick up my bead with my right hand and then when I have to lay it, I lay it with my left. So, that way, because my left hand doesn't wanna pick up beads properly. Now, because I have such a hard time, again, I grab my bead and I'm resting my wrist on the table and laying my hand flat which I know we really shouldn't do but I'm not getting near my cuticle with this so I'm going to lay that down up kind of high push that all the way across and then slowly feather it down and you can move your dominant hand away from the brush like I'm doing just a little bit to help um, to help the stability. Make sure you're checking your sides a lot. Make sure you push it all the way out to the side. I missed a spot over here. I didn't push it out far enough before it started to dry. All right, now we're gonna feather that down. And if it's not thick enough, you can always go back and add more to the tip. You just wanna make sure you cover your, your, your apex spot right there. And try to get that as flat as you can while, you, while it's wet. I didn't add my layer of clear because I forgot. <laughs> But I'm just, this is the, the basic principle of it, okay? You're going to do the same thing with the clear that I'm doing right now, so. That mine is really thin on the tip, so I'm adding more. 
checking my sides. There we go. And I know I have, I didn't lay it very well right there, but I can buff that out. I'd rather just make sure I have enough acrylic on it than, than worry about it being perfectly straight right now because the file will take care of all that. Building that up a little bit. Now I'm going to pick up another bead. I would, I prefer to do smaller beads when I'm working on my dominant hand just because I have a hard time chasing after it with my, with my left. Now the hard part up around the cuticles. This is the most difficult part because it's so hard to keep your hand steady and not get it all on your cuticles. See now when I added this other bead, it covered up that little ridge that I had left there where I didn't get it in time. And I'm, if you can see, I'm still resting my wrist on the table so that I don't, because um, I tend to shake a lot too, like my hands shake quite a bit. Now I am going to do my cuticle. Again, a very small wet bead. It's very little. I prefer to do this just a little bit at a time. And I like to sit, sit my finger down and kind of roll it to pull that skin away. And resting my, my left on the table, I lightly push it up to the cuticle and just barely tap it in there. And if it takes you four or five beads to do your cuticle, good, because that's less, less trouble you're going to have. Very small bead. Now, resting my wrist, I'm just, I actually use my brush to block it from the cuticle. I don't know if you could see what I did there. And after I get my cuticle done, I'm going to go back and build up my apex. But for right now, I just want to make sure I don't flood my cuticles and I get it as neat as I can up there. So again, rolling my finger and resting my wrist. I am just tapping it right on that cuticle just as slowly as you can. Just super gently touching that. There we go. Now, if you did get some on your cuticle, just go back with the brush and run it between your nail and your cuticle, just like that. See, you can see where I got some on there. Just wipe that off before it dries. Nobody cares. It's fine. We all get it on there. Now, I'm going to get my brush wet, clean, and flatten it out. Get it as flat as you can and run it run it back through again just to make sure that you got it away from your cuticle. And again, I'm resting my wrist. It's not great, but I'm not all up in my cuticles, so I'm going to take another small bead and just go back around and make sure I got all the spaces. A little teeny one. Because see right here where I missed a little? I'm just going to lightly push that in. Set the bead down a little further away from your cuticle and just push it up. Lightly push it up. Alright, so, so-so. Not great. I am going to add a little bit to build up my, my apex because it's pretty pretty weak. <laughs> but I'm also capping, so I don't want to do too much. Now I'm going to take a pretty good size bead because I'm going to feather this all the way down. And again, resting my wrist, smack that right in the middle, push it down. 
Now you can push this right up to the cuticle for blending reasons so that it, it looks nice and even and just lightly spread it. And now push it, push it down. Now that last one that I added, it did build up my apex, but it also made me kind of lumpy. <laughs> So, you know, just use your brush to flatten that all out. Make sure you're, you're checking your sides. Now this is where I tend to have problems because I don't know if you can see, once I get it up here, I tend to not want to put more around the cuticles and, and risk flooding it. I'm just gonna smooth that out. Just get your brush wet and just keep rubbing it and that'll smooth you know, as it dries, that'll keep it smooth. And that'll give you a better shape in the end. Because you can sit and brush it as long as you want to. And again, if you missed any spots or you see any dips or anything, go back and add it. Like, I'm still seeing a little dip right here and right here on the side of my nail. So I'm just going to push that in just as lightly as I can. Now, the more times you do this, the more risk you run of messing it up, but you know, I don't want bald spots, so there we go. And if you think that you're, if you still don't like how high it is, you can go back and build it back up. I prefer to do just literally a tiny bit at a time because it keeps it from, from getting super messy. Now I'm still resting my wrist and I'm just pushing that up ever so lightly just to fill in that gap. And then wipe your brush, make it super flat, and run it around. And that gives you a better shape. Now, see mine's still kind of a lumpy, chunky mess. That's my fault. <laughs> and my tip is still really, really thin. So let's do one more. Now I'm going to add this one at the end of my nail and feather it up to make sure that I get it down here because I keep apparently wiping it off. But honestly, resting your wrist on the table is the key to doing your, your dominant hand. Just keep that wrist down and you, find you get a lot more control over that hand, over that traitorous left hand. Better. Not much, but a little bit. Still keeping my wrist down. So, somewhat okay. It's not awful. Now, what you can do here is take your... I'm going to run my, my sanding band across it just um, lightly before I, ca before I cap it just to make sure it's, it's as smooth as I can get it before I cap it. I'm um, also, what you can do is to get rid of that, if you have any like chunky spots up here, is just take your cuticle bit and run it through. And that gets rid of any flooding before you cap it so you don't have to drill through your capping as well. You can also, while it's still a little wet, take your cuticle pusher and just like you're doing prep, run it along right here to make sure that it's separate from your cuticle and you didn't get any on it, which I did, so. That's how I kinda solve any, any, any parts that I did mess up. It also, you can just, there we go. Push it away from your cuticle with the cuticle pusher as well. And make sure that it's nice and flat over there and not all lumpy. There we go. Now, again, I am laying my hand down, laying my hand down on the table and running my nail to the, oops, taking my nail to the sanding band. And I like to do this super lightly. So I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to press very close 
or press down very hard this close to my skin when I'm using my left hand. And again, use these fingers to steady it as much as you can. I just like to run it back and forth and make sure that everything's nice and even without a bunch of ridges anywhere. And see, like I said, when I'm going, when I am using this, I'm, I'm still resting my wrist and moving very lightly, barely touching, and only moving a little bit at a time. I'm not going super fast back and forth. There we go. do a little bit of shaping before I cap it just because some of my acrylic bled over the tip and I don't want that on there and I don't want it to cap that way so I just like to double check my sides in front before I cap it again I'm moving my finger not my file there we go now I am going to check it with my cuticle bit real quick just to make sure nothing's touching because sometimes when you're using really bright colors like this, if it touches your cuticle, it, the color will bleed even though the acrylic's not on it if you wipe it off. So just run that really lightly through there. Like just one good pass to make sure nothing's touching. Now I'm also going to use the acetone to get those ridges out that I use because normally I wouldn't file the colored acrylic before I add the clear, but because it's my, my dominant hand and I know I, I, I messed up, I'm just going to rub it down and get those grooves from the file off. That way they don't show underneath that clear acrylic. See? It just smooths it out really well. Doo -doo -doo. There's a little spot right there, I gotta hit again. I know y'all see that. There we go. Got rid of that. Now I am going to cap it after I move this because it's there's a lot of <laughs> I keep putting my hand down in it, so I'm just going to move that over there. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to clean my brush out and get all that colored acrylic out because that the colored acrylic can stain. So you got to make sure it's coming off. Make sure after you do the colored acrylic, it's wiping off clean. There we go. Now I got my clear. And I'm going to pick that up with my right hand and use my left hand to lay it. And I'm going to start up at the top like before. Push it all the way over. Now push that up. I'm pushing this up as far as I can without actually pushing it to my cuticle by pulling instead of pushing. Making sure it goes all the way to the sides, patting that down. Now see how far that went up just by pulling it and I'm still not touching my cuticles. So run that right there, make sure it's not touching. Just get that last little wet bead of clear. Now I'm going to lay it just like I did before and really lightly 
very gently, very slowly push it up to the cuticle so I'm not flooding. Just kind of let it, let it run. Now finish it, pat it down nice and smooth, let that dry, and then you can finish your shaping and finish up. Oh, that does not look good, buddy. I got it a little too thick, but that's okay. Because it's this hand, I'm about to file the crap out of it, so. And I didn't make sure that your ends are thick enough. Make sure your sides are capped nice and well. There we go. Now it looks like a hot mess, but I would rather have too much than not enough. And then when I file, I have a mess on my hands because I have to go back and add acrylic. I see a spot where I'm missing a bunch right here. There we go. I know this is like the worst possible acrylic application. I'm doing everything wrong, but you can't do everything the normal way when you're, when you're doing your dominant hand. It sucks. <laughs> Check your sides. And see, I see another little tiny spot where I missed. Right here. All right, so we got it somewhat reasonably, reasonably done. <laughs> it looks like a fat bean right now. Giovanni, see my bean? That's my bean. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna let that dry for a second and then I am going to go, right now I am going to go back over my cuticle because why not? While it's not too dry. Since I already know I'm taking it off, I'm going to save myself the trouble. Definitely do not do this while it's wet. Wait for it to set. See how much I got up on my cuticles? Ew. I'll run that over there. Make sure you're sealing. Ah, make sure you're sealing right around there. Making sure that it's flush with your natural nail. See, I had a big, big, huge chunk right there where I went back and filled that spot in. So my cuticles are clean. I have quite a bit of filing to do on the clear, but that's okay. Now I'm just gonna, holding it steady, I'm gonna run my finger fingernail over the drill, not moving the drill. And if your drill doesn't have a reverse, 
you're going to want to go against it this way. Good, beep, good apex on there. My shape's a hot mess, but we'll get to that. And this is the only time when I have to do this side of the nail, this is when I have to move the drill. And like I said, I lay both of my hands down and just... So I got a pretty, pretty decent shape on there. Now I'm going to take my hand file, take my nail to it. Back and forth until you get it nice and straight like you want it. Same thing on the sides, just moving my nail and not the file. Same thing over here. To that side. I see some problems, but. And take as long as you need, because you can pretty much file off any mistake you make with your non dominant hand. The file will take care of it for you. There we go. And I'm just going to run it lightly over the whole rest of my nail. What I like to do is go this way because it helps it get nice and level right here. Or you can do it back and forth, whatever works. So see, we got a pretty decent shape going now. So you want to check up here and make sure that it's nice and smooth right there. That you don't have any lumps. That's where all of my lumps show up. It's right up where I try to make that that bead meet the cuticle without touching it. There we go. Now I'm going to buff it. Again, move my finger. Make sure you get the whole nail. And I have quite a bit of grooves because I filed it so much, so Make sure you wipe it with acetone before you top coat to get that out of there. Get that off of there, like I'm going to do. There we go. Pretty smooth. Like, it's not perfect. You can see a little little mess right here, but I'm happy with it, so. Now I am going to top coat because that's as good as I need it to be. Same thing when I polish. Resting my hand and resting my wrist so I don't flood. All right, we're going to cure that. I'll be right back. All right, that's all done curing, and there you go. Got a pretty solid apex on it. It's not too lumpy. Frankly, I'm okay with that. Uh, like that's that's good enough for me. That's all I really need out of life. Like anything more than that, and I'm just asking. I'm asking too much. There we go. I love that glitter. Aww. You can see the underneath. Shape's not too bad. All right. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Thank you.